Hi, we're going to do an overview of the standard reduction potential table. This is what we use in electrochemical cells. Um, so I have a picture, thank you to check study. Um, I have a picture of the standard reduction potential table. I know that is a mouthful. Um, it is summarized by one symbol. This is the E naught. So E naught, um, that is going to be your standard reduction potential, your standard re reduction potential and this is in volts. Um, now, a couple of things I'd like to point out. Check out the numbers here. We have positive, large positive, a positive 2.87, and then it decreases right there. Hydrogen, I'm going to mark that because it's special, is zero, okay? Um, and then uh, you start getting negative numbers, and it gets more negative as you go down. So the most negative number is lithium right down here, at a negative 3.045. So where do we get these values from? Let's start there. <clears throat> is by com comparing each of these elements to hydrogen. Hydrogen is our comparison. It has a special name. We call it she. It's a standard hydrogen electrode is what she stands for. Again, standard hydrogen electrode. So we will take half reactions. We'll have hydrogen. It's going to be hydrogen gas that we're going to um, bubble through water. Um, and for example, we're going to hook that up to fluorine. Okay, so we're going to have um, this, this, here we go, quick drawing of an electrochemical cell. Um, we have hydrogen and fluorine, and when we hook that up, we discover that fluorine has a potential of a positive 2.87. So all of these numbers, it's comparing that element, for example, silver to hydrogen, and silver with hydrogen has a positive 0.8. If we put lithium attached to a hydrogen electrode, lithium is a negative 3.045. So that's where these numbers come from. Okay, that's the first thing you need to know. Each of those numbers is more comparing hydrogen to that particular element in, electro, in an electrochemical cell. Um, now, interpreting the numbers, because this is important. Um, first, so, so important. Every single one of these half reactions, they're written as reduction. I put that right here. They're written as reduction. So be careful. Make a mental note. These are written as reduction. Notice it is going to be the species plus two electrons. So we're adding electrons, gaining electrons to yield, in this case, the two F minus. So every single one of these is written as reduction. And that's embedded inside the name of the table, standard reduction potential table. It's not standard oxidation, standard reduction potential table. Now, the numbers, super important. A positive E is spontaneous. It means that it's product favored. Um, and that, as you'll see, is going to be related to our delta G and our K. Kind of cool. Watch the videos on Gibbs free energy and equilibrium connected to electrochemistry. Negative E, um, so that would be like our lithium down here, all right, these negative values. That means it's not spontaneous. Reactant favored is going to require energy to force that reaction to happen. Um, now, this is kind of cool. I mentioned these are all written as reduction. Well, we could flip this and write it as oxidation. So for example, let's take our fluorine right here. If I flip it, you have two fluorine now as the reactant. Um, that's the aqueous, yield the fluoride gas plus the two electrons. So I've got the two electrons on the product side. This is written as oxidation. Now, when you flip the half reaction to change it from reduction to oxidation, all you have to do is change the sign on E, on that standard reduction potential. This, instead of being a positive 2.87, the E is a negative 2.87. So pretty easy, pretty easy. Um, that all you have to do is switch the sign. Um, similar to enthalpy, delta H, when we flip chemical reactions. Um, so if you flip this to oxidation, all you do is change the sign. Okay, all you do is change the sign. Multiply the sign by a minus one. Um, okay, down here. If you have to multiply one of these half reactions, um, so let's say that you are um, balancing uh, half reactions to add them together for a total chemical reaction. If you have to multiply by a factor, here's the important thing. You do not multiply delta E. That's actually different from enthalpy. If we multiply a chemical reaction by a factor of two, 
we multiply delta H by a two because it will produce twice as much energy. That is not true on delta E. And so I'm gonna put a big star right here. Be careful. Common mistake that students make, and I can't tell you how many times I've seen this on AP FRQ tests, um, where students have to multiply a half reaction, and you know what happens. Uh, a significant number of students will multiply the E value. So let me show you an example on this. Um, let's take our lithium as our example. Um, I'll do it over here. So we're going to have lithium plus the one electron is going to yield the lithium solid, and the delta E is negative 3.04, okay? Uh, four, five, sorry, four, five there. Now let's say I have to multiply this by a two. So I go through and multiply this by a two. Two Li plus two E yields two Li. The delta E, or excuse me, the E, the standard reduction potential is still negative 3.045, okay? That stays the same. And here's the reason why these are ratios of um, the potential, the voltage, per number of electrons. So watch this. Um, the lithium, that means we've got negative 3.045 potential volts for every one electron. Well, if I multiply this by two, okay? Multiply this by two, watch what it is. It's negative 6.90 divided by two electrons. Divide that, guess what? It's the same. That number, again, it is going to be the ratio of the voltage per electron. So if you multiply by a factor, you multiply both the voltage and the number of electrons, it means you have the same ratio. You have the same ratio. So again, huge, huge takeaway, big star. If you multiply a half reaction by a factor, do not, do not multiply the standard reduction potential, don't multiply the E because it's a ratio. Okay, one of the few times in chemistry that you'll hear me say this, don't multiply that E value. Okay, now the other really big um, takeaways that you need on this is interpreting overall um, oxidizing agent and reducing agent. So let's look at this. <clears throat> you know that a positive value means that it's spontaneous, product favored. Um, so the bigger the positive value, the more easily the reduced, okay? So this is more easily reduced because it's a bigger number, okay? Um, you can think of it as being like even more spontaneous. Uh, a greater potential, a greater voltage right there. Um, so because this is easily reduced, you'll recall from our labeling um, that whatever is reduced is the oxidizing agent. So the larger, the more positive that E, the stronger this is kind of cool, the oxidizing agent. So if I were to compare this, it'd be pretty easy. I would say that fluorine at positive 2.87 is a stronger oxidizing agent than cerium at 1.61. Yeah, kind of cool because it's a larger standard reduction potential. It's a larger E value. Now, under that same thought, okay, down here, the more negative that value, the more negative the value, the more easily oxidized. So this is, means it's more easily oxidized. And think about this with me. This is written as reduction, is written as um, gaining electrons. And that's a negative, man, that's a, um, a significantly negative voltage. But if we flip this, okay, I flip this, making it oxidation, wow, that becomes a positive 3.045. It means it's easy, it easily loses electrons. It takes a lot of energy to force that baby to gain electrons. But man, you flip it to oxidation, positive 3.045 is going to um, readily lose electrons. So the more negative the value on this table, since it's written as reduction, the more negative the value, the more easily oxidized, which means all of your numbers down here, the more negative, the stronger the reducing agent. Stronger the reducing agent. And that also makes sense. Um, this is more easily oxidized, loses electrons, which means it forces another species to what? Gain, 
to gain electrons, which is a reducing agent. Um, so two big takeaways. You're going to increase the oxidizing agent as you go up and as you go down, you increase the reducing agent. So the more negative the number, the more easily it loses electrons, the stronger the reducing agent. The more positive the number, the more easily it gains electrons, the stronger the oxidizing agent. Um, so you can be asked comparisons. Knowing these two principles, you're good to go. And remember, you don't have to memorize this. You can make it make sense. Figure it out. What you do have to have memorized is that positive E is spontaneous, negative E is not spontaneous. Okay, great work. Nice overview of standard reduction potential tables. There are lots and lots of videos. If you need more help and support on electrochemistry and redox, check out the playlist on redox. Thanks so much. Have a great day.